I've got five iOS apps that I want to share with you that you're going to want to have in your ham radio toolkit next on N1JUR Amateur Radio. Welcome, I'm Eric, Paul Sign N1JUR, and today I've got another five great iOS ham radio apps that I'm hoping might make a home on your smartphone. Um, I want to preface today by saying that uh, I've either purchased these apps outright or they're free. Uh, so any of these reviews or opinions are my own. Um, and again, I am creating content for those folks that have left comments uh, who are Android users. Um, I just want to apologize in advance. You know, I'm sure you can go with Android if you like unintuitive, frustrating, illogical user interfaces. That's fine. Just a fanboy at heart. So as a reminder, you can download any of these apps straight uh, from the links below in the description. Uh, and if you haven't already, make sure you uh, like, subscribe and share as this content uh, can get in front of those that might be the ham curious or who could benefit from it. So let's get into it. All right, so our first app of the five today is called Q Codes. And so let's head over to my smartphone here and take a look at Q Codes. This is a pretty simple piece of software. There's not a whole lot to it. In essence, it's basically a description and a list of all of the Q codes that we use in ham radio. Um, one of the things I reference a lot um, is sometimes, you know, what is the difference between say QRN or QRM? You know, both of us kind of use it interchangeably a lot of times, but they definitely have a clear delineation. So we can quickly pull this up and go to QRN here. And we can see that the reference uh, question uh, for QRN is that might be from natural noise. So like um, lightning or wind or whatever. Um, or, you know, the one that I usually end up getting messed up a lot is QRM um, and that's man-made. So that could be someone, you know, keying up on a frequency three kilohertz or just shy three kilohertz above you or below you or Someone just constantly talking over you every time you're doing, you know, QSO with somebody. Maybe at the next activation you do, you might want to throw a curveball to a few folks. Excuse me, sir. Seeing as how the VP is such a VIP, shouldn't we keep the PC on the QT? Because if it leaks to the VC, you can end up in MIA and then we'd all be put on KP. And that is the Q codes app. So this is another great app uh, that I have. Uh, but I think this app definitely requires a more feature uh, detailed deep dive uh, in another video. So if you think um, I should do that, definitely leave it in the comments below. But it's a great portable or alternative logging uh, app uh, if you say don't like to use hammers or don't want to lug a, a Windows machine around for N3FJ, N1MM or any of those other apps. So let's uh, jump over to my uh, smartphone here. I'm going to just dive into some of the high level features of SW Log. Uh, again, uh, if you want to learn more about this or you want me to go into a deeper dive, uh, leave it in the comments below. So this app has got a lot of the same features that you'd expect out of uh, any logging app with being able to set up uh, QRZ, uh, sync, being able to deal with UTC times. It's got a great uh, map feature so you can toggle between all of the three features. And then it also has a component to be able to sync back your log automatically to your you know, SW log on your desktop or somewhere else in the cloud. You can synchronize, uh, like I said, with your SW log desktop version. You can also download the latest uh, parks database. So uh, when you set this app the first time up, you're going to have to do that. But the benefit to that is that, you know, you're always going to get a fresh updated database um, anytime you're out in the field or before you go out in the field. Uh, logging is very simple. Um, you can just simply add a contact here up in all of the details that you might need. The call sign detail lookup is pretty straightforward. And actually just pop in my buddy's brand new uh, vanity call here. You'll see that it does a quick lookup and that. so you can go in here. Um, it, this is a test I did before is remembering the park ID that I had in here before. Um, so the benefits of all the fields that you normally need for POTA um, are all there, including summit uh, uh, details. So uh, from here, you can easily just see how far you're away from the contact and then you just click add and it's already been saved to the log. And then if you want to say, let's uh, plot out the QSOs, the benefit now is you got a full uh, fledged uh, QSO map here. Um, and you can see, you know, how, just like you have in hammers, uh, how you're getting out where, where your contacts uh, currently are being pointed. So 
Um, there is a feature in here that I uh, am not a, a big user of, but in essence, you might be. Um, there is a shortwave uh, listening log. Um, so those that uh, are big shortwave listening users, you can use this app too to be able to synchronize um, all of your shortwave listening uh, contacts um, and also browse all of that stuff. There is um, a couple of other components here um, that you can get the GPS information, which is very accurate with all the main to head details um, and location. You can also, um, from that list, um, there is a ADIF export, which you can uh, separate uh, all of your contacts out from, or you can export your whole entire log to ADIF to import into any of one of your loggers uh, manually or upload to the Parks on the Air database. So that's SW Log. If you'd like to see more again of a detailed review, make sure you leave a comment below and I will uh, get that uh, video uh, Put together app number three is amateur radio toolkit this app is kind of toted as the swiss army knife uh, of the arl antenna book my own uh, opinion it's got a lot of great calculators uh, that you know are either out on the web um, that you have to go to multiple sites to pick up or use and it has a lot of the most frequency uh, frequently used um, formulas that we use in amateur radio. A few things about this app, I guess I'm gonna start off right off the bat as we jump over here, that I'm a little kind of turned off by the interface. You know, again, I understand that it's a lot of just formulas and quick produce a result if you're trying to measure an SWR or you're trying to figure out an antenna length for a dipole in 20 meters. Layout itself, basic, where there's a number of different apps. The one thing that is a big turnoff for me is that I'd probably would like to pay for the um, software up front if I was going to buy it. It is free in the App Store. And then they have these pro add-on versions, which is great. But again, like a, I don't know the benefit for me if I would need to, that I wouldn't go out to the web to be able to find this information for free. If the developer uh, was thinking about it, I would just charge a nominal fee at the very beginning of the app because you do have a lot of content and a lot of uh, calculators in there and just being able to have access to all of it would be totally plus uh, instead of having to kind of struggle with it. Feel free to download this app. It's a great app to have in your toolkit. All right, our next app is called Netscraper. Now, I'm really waffling on this, whether I was gonna include it in this list. I started to like it when I first downloaded it, but as I start to use it a little bit more, it feels like it was kind of half-baked. You know, for someone who might like embrace the old skew amorphism of uh, the 90s when Apple and other smartphone manufacturers were still designing applications and desktops to look like our real representations of those things, this is where this app kind of, um, you know, embraces it uh, wholeheartedly. So as I dive over to it, you'll kind of see what I mean um, in its configuration, why it uh, comes up a little short. With this app, it is basically an, an active net list. Now, I really only use this app for one thing, and it's got a little bit more power behind it for those that might want to uh, use it for some of its advanced features. I use it, I'm out activating, I'm on 20 meters, and I know either it's super busy or it's in the middle of the day. A lot of times I'll spin the dial and I'll spin, you know, up and down the 20 meter band trying to figure out whether or not, you know, there's a net there or there's some other activity or maybe a, another hunter's there. This app helps me narrow down very quickly uh, in combination with, say, you know, the POTA um, activators database, I can go through the app pretty quickly and see that, you know, hey, for 420 meters, um, I've got the California net on 14, uh, 340 at this time. I know in my mind when I spin the dials, if I could possibly hear them, you know, that's going to be um, a away from a frequency for me uh, in terms of activation. But at the same time, I probably don't if I'm close enough, but I can't hear them. I also don't want to be on that frequency that net's going to be running on because I'm gonna compete with them and they're gonna hear me sometimes and propagation may you know, swing in their favor and overpower me or I you know, might overpower them. This app, too much skeuomorphic for me um, and the background itself is just a little bit uh, stretched and add any value to it, kind of drag it into the 21st century and make it a little bit. It's the fourth app that I have, uh, you know, five app reviewed it. All right, here is one of my favorite apps and is in spot number five uh, for this review. Um, I love this app. This app's called Real Time Lightning Strike, and it has been a blast to have. Um, I have used this, uh, especially during spring summer months here in uh, the Northeast, when thunder thunderstorms kind of can sometimes maybe ruin an activation or you know field day, <laughs> for an instance. Um, this app feeds off of the two big lightning databases, um, and it is top notch. So let's hop over there real quick and take a look at it. 
the with the lightning app it is um got a bunch of small little features in it and again it's really data you know driven so you have to have a good cell phone um, and a data connection but once you got that out of the way and you're in and running um like i said it filters off of the uh, two lightning maps and uh blitzer tongue uh, databases um so it's feeding all of that data um it is a real-time um, database and you'll find that you can go in here and tweak settings by how many stations are shown, the number of lines in terms of the directivity of the lightning and the direction of that. The coverage maps are quite complex and get really huge um, and almost kind of bury the regular map, but you can turn all of those features on and off. It also has a great map in terms of being able to set the satellite maps to, you know, a road map to be able to do uh, this QSM feature, which I think is the default one. I usually run on satellite. You can turn whether you hear thunder on or off, um, and then it has a daylight, uh, day night mode. You can turn clouds on and off. So it has a lot of great features, all built into the app that you can flip on or toggle off or on. And the benefit to it is it's got a little cool little feature that you can actually go in and flip on lightning um, sound wave files. So it is a great app to have on your phone, especially when, and you never know when the thunderstorm might creep up. This is a perfect app to be able to have that detection happen. Make sure you don't get your uh, activation uh, canceled. That is a real time lightning strike app. All right, well, there you go. Uh, hopefully uh, that was useful and uh, maybe one of these apps might make a future home on your smartphone. You know, if there's an app you'd like me to review, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. And as always, make sure you like, subscribe and share as it helps get this content in front of other uh, ham radio enthusiasts and the ham curious. And as always, thanks again for watching and 7.3.